get in focus. All right, trans Doctor Who. In case you're unfamiliar with Doctor Who, it's a very, or it was a very low budget show. Like that was part of its charm. Was it was. This the sets and the costumes and everything. I mean, it was like Star Trek levels of low budget. Maybe even worse than Star Trek levels because it was English and English anything English at the time was kind of like a, a poor imitation of Hollywood. <laughs> anyway, click the links for Odyssey Bitch Sheet or join channel and become a member. So uh, you've probably even heard hear this name. The the last lady who was in Doctor Who was Jodie Whittaker. Uh, that that's it's a. It's like everything is in the right place. It has money. It's got sets and costumes and, and a sufficient budget to make a good movie. And then you, and then you watch it like, oh, this is just whatever topical SJW talking point is uh, is is in the news is just being repeated in Doctor Who. So if it's if it's global warming, then it's going to be that'll be in the news. Or if it has something to do with Trump, then they'll have some something very similar to a Trump type of rule or like really on the nose cringy cringy sgw stuff when when they do stuff like that and they think it's clever like oh we we really fooled them we we made a a, a dictatorial fascist leader in the future and it's it's vaguely modeled on trump yeah so did every other sgw show in, in hollywood which is all of hollywood yeah real stunning and brave you really went out on a limb there to do do it yeah gee another video on global warming Thanks, thanks. Um, that I'm not even kidding. That's kind of the stuff they were doing. So uh, what happened is a Doctor Who, and then there's a companion, and uh, usually the the choice for a companion would be the, I think the ones before Jodie Whittaker's era was a a hot redheaded chick with big boobs, and before that was a, a hot blonde chick with big boobs. So now they've got this Yasmin Finney. Confirms upcoming Doctor Who companion Rose is transgender. So there's the Doctor Who. I don't know who the, the Doctor Who himself is, but this is the uh, the sidekick is a, um, a a BLT person. So it's just fabulous. So first of all, I have some I have some questions. I have some concerns. How big is the trans audience? <laughs> is it is it bigger in the UK for some reason? And you know, really, what like where's the audience for Doctor Who? Is it just a UK thing, or is it worldwide? And how big is the audience? This is the more important question: the audience that wants to see a trans sidekick in Doctor Who. What's the um, what's the number on that? Have you have you have you done some testing to see see what the desirability? Like, what do we really want in a Doctor Who companion sidekick? How about a hot blonde chick with big boobs? Okay, what's next on the list? A hot red haired chick with big boobs. Okay, so what's last on the list? Oh, well, last on the list is is probably this. So that's exactly what you get, like the last thing you want. Um, so the audience that wants a trans um, Doctor Who character, it's probably pretty small. So why are you putting it in the show if nobody is asking for it? Usually you'd find a hot chick to be the sidekick. Like that's kind of the, the staple for shows for the past since there's ever been shows is, you know, if you went in doubt, throw a hot chick in anything because hot chicks appeal to a large percentage of people, um, attractive people, attract people. So why would you put this character in a show if you know it's uh, really like we're talking a fraction of a percent? Because the show is just a vehicle to push an agenda. Like, n no shit. <laughs> These producers are parasites that hitch rides on things until they suck it dry, they destroy it, and then they move on to a another show. So, Lord of the Rings or, or, or Wheel of Time or Ghostbusters or any anything they find. It's like they never come and create something new. Because if they create something new that's woke from the start they know it will get no eyeballs. Oh, we're, we created it like a, a vagrant queen. To be fair, that's, uh, I mean, that was kind of derivative out of like Star Trek and Star Wars, but it was something that was their own thing. Reagan Queen on the Sci-Fi Network, I think we were supposed to go for eight, eight episodes. It, I don't think it quite made it, but it was their own creation. So fair enough to them, but they, like it was horrible because like it didn't have any name recognition and you knew it was woke and there was nothing. It was a, uh, a, a female main character and then a lesbian sidekick character um 
So it was, and one of them was POC. So P, I think they're both. Maybe they're both POCs. So PLC, BOT, BLT for for the characters, and you, you think like, oh, usually you know it's guy meets girl type of character because that's appealing to ninety nine percent of the audience. But you guys went the other direction. You put two chicks together. Um, kind of weird. Yeah. So how many episodes? Oh, I think it went six episodes. So congratulations to that. So these kind of shows, they're just vehicles to push this kind of agenda. Um, so how does a BLT character serve the plot? Uh, it doesn't. It serves a woke checklist. I mean, obvious. Like you're not, you're not pulling the wool over anyone's eyes. We know you have a checklist with this kind of thing, and a BLT POC checks two boxes at once. And there's an oppression hierarchy where you get more points um, for different things. And trans BLT is pretty much at the top of the hierarchy so it's it's you know you're rolling the dice and assigning points to different things and back in the day like just being gay would have been enough that would have been the top of the hierarchy ladder and suddenly gay is now passe it's it's uh they don't even they, they did some celebrates just reminds me of the john boyega thing where oh god the cringe is off the, the, the lack of self-awareness with hollywood types is, is insane where he did some things uh some blm thing and he's he was just out of the star wars movie and uh, he says, he's raising his fist in the air. He goes, I don't care how this affects my career, but but black lives matter. Like, you really you really think that that would hurt you when all of Hollywood, all of corporate America, all the mainstream media is saying the same message? How exactly did you think that that was counterculture? It's legitimately a lack of self-awareness. They exist in an echo chamber. They're in their own heads. They never have anyone say, oh, hey, John, you sound like an idiot. Everyone's on board with BLM. It was like the height of the height of BLM at 2020. It's like that was before people were embezzling money. Now BLM's name is thankfully tainted and it's kind of gone away. But that was at the height of it. Bank of America had given a billion dollars. I think Soros gave a quarter billion dollars to BLM. And it's you, where did all that money go? Well, a few of the few of the million dollars went into people's homes. But you know, the funny thing about BLM is they tracked down some of that money. It's like, yeah, yeah, a few tens of millions of dollars is tracked down, and, and it went into people being embezzled. Um, that chick in in L.A., Southern California, bought a bunch of homes, and yeah, yeah, of course she probably ripped the money off, but. There was over a billion dollars. You go, oh, did they build some schools or something? Or did they, like, where did they put that money? What what did they invest it in? What, did they build, like, after-school programs for disadvantaged youth? Or is some kind of tutorials? Something? Uh, low-income housing? So where'd the money go? I just asked that question. Where'd the money go? It's, like, over a billion dollars. And nobody has an answer to that like oh this lady in southern california that one black chick she bought four homes yeah yeah, i get that those four homes are less than 10 million dollars that's 10 million out of over a billion where the rest of the money go it's you never get an answer to that it just kind of just kind of disappeared up in smoke so if you're a some some sucker liberal who donated to blm you got your little dopamine rush congratulations you that the money went from the bankers and i think it went back into the bankers you know a little bit of nepotism you you hire your nephew to uh oversee the funds and out of 100 percent that money it's like half of it starts going back into fees and administration costs and over the next 10 years you go oh yeah so the money's all gone and we paid the administrators and what do we have to show for it oh nothing oh that's weird i mean because you could have invested it into into like just real estate and and you would have had more money at the end of that 10 years but it's like it went all back into the the people's families who donate to uh who oversaw who uh the the bank of america donated the money it's like i got a feeling that money went back to bank of america probably even even more in taxpayer funds if you're increasing like tax credits and things and charitable deductions and things like that it's it's bizarre where was i going with this anyway so uh they're doing this thing where they're um where like i said it's just not enough to be gay anymore like and there used to be gay walks or marches to donate money for different events but now this is a trans like it's not even like a highlighted of the gay thing it's it's just a trans march on its own so you see so talking about like gays are like maybe not even five percent of the population and trans at least a few years ago like even now organic trans like are we talking even one percent of the population it's kind of weird that it's like just being gay isn't enough anymore it's like you got you got to be trans um, so they're they're doing some speech here where they're talking about the government is um, is out to to get them. So the thing is, um, you're only doing this because it's a trendy cultural Marxist thing to do. Like we're all on board with that. We all see what's going on. We don't. No, nobody thinks. 
you know, 20 years ago, you might have been stunning. Gee, every corporation's got a rainbow flag now. Yeah, yeah, gee, it's, it's weird they weren't doing that 20 years ago, but they're, they're doing it now. Um, you don't care about Doctor Who. Nobody involved with Doctor Who cares about Doctor Who. Or thing is, even making a good story, or even making money, really. I, I've got to assume this is subsidized from somebody. Or the lore of the show, or the difference in, in being curative versus transformative. SGWs are transformative where people who are into whatever original IP, they're, um, people who are really into it are going to be curative. Everything is just a tool to push some globalist propaganda. You've seen that. If you've been paying attention over the past 10 years, everything that comes out has been slowly subverted to the point where I, I look at Hollywood now, I think like, oh, there's nothing for the normal person in Hollywood now. After, the, after 20, 2016, it was bad enough. After 2020... It's like, oh, Hollywood just ended in 2020. Think, what do you mean? How can a billion-dollar industry end? For a lot of people, it ended. And I think you'll probably come to that conclusion. Uh, also, when you when you like, how many how many disappointing movies can come out before you realize, oh, this is just the future. They're all going to be just milk toast. Anyway, so the actor uh, said this that the government is trying to get rid of them. When they say things like this, uh, what's the color of the sky in your world? How deep in an echo chamber do you have to be? The UK government will arrest you if you insult these purse puppies. They'll, they'll come to your house and try to issue citations. You made a Facebook post that didn't use someone's pronouns. The police in the UK will come to your house for that. The government is pushing this stuff as hard as the people that in the organizations themselves are pushing it. They are. Have you not seen the rainbow police cars in the UK? It's the, it's um, it's uh, I can't even quite describe it accurately. Uh, it's just. I mean, it's 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 a gay car. Yes, it's very very gay. The UK is openly embracing the Weimar. They're trying to like recreate the same situation that led to that little kerfuffle <laughs> a few years ago, a few decades ago, all over again. Uh, they just nobody wants to learn from history. So this person is a POC BLT on a TV show on, on a pretty well-known property Doctor Who, and you think that the government is trying to get rid of you. Like do you even hear the words as they come out of your mouth? Nobody has ever said to to these Hollywood types, oh, this is a bad thing you said. Here's here's some evidence to contradict you, because it's like they just don't get that kind of feedback where you and I do. Anyway, the next point is who the hell is watching uh, this kind of Doctor Who woke cancer? Like after the Jodie Whittaker thing, um, you know, I mean that was unwatchable. I, I tried. To, I thought, oh, I'll watch a couple of these shows and do a review. It's like it was as unwatchable as Batwoman or the the Ms. Marvel type of stuff. It's like you had a big budget, and you, you I mean, you could have taken that budget and put half of it up your nose and it would have been better. Uh, do people hate themselves that much enough to watch Woke Doctor Who? Doctor Who used to be a cool, low-budget show. The budget went up quite a bit over the since it came back on the air, I think 2005 or something, or in the 90s, and then it had a resurgence again. Um, but it's just Marxist propaganda now. What's the Venn diagram where you take like African, trans, and BLT? That overlap is probably going to be less than 1%. So why on earth would you put a Zer like this in the show? Because fuck you. That's why. That's why they do a lot of this stuff. Is because oh we're gonna we're gonna subvert expectations and outrage the Chads. I don't know I don't know what your watch time for this kind of show is. Uh, there cannot be that many hardcore fans. So so you're not outraging people after after the Jodie Whittaker stuff. I think. People realize, oh, Hollywood is over, or Doctor Who is over. That's how it works. You realize, like, one genre is over. Um, vaguely, the uh, superhero genre, oh, that's all Marvel, DC, Fox, Sony, whoever. All that stuff is all over. It's all, it's all going to be subtly woke propaganda. It's just, it's not going to be. It's just going to be vanilla milk toast. So that's all over. And then you start looking around Hollywood for different genres. And like, oh wait, all of Hollywood's over. And then you look at shows on TV, at BBC. It's like, oh. That's all over too. Like, yeah, it's all over. You got to create something new. You got to. That's why Comics Gate is such an interesting concept. The concept of creating your own pop culture. Anyway, you can uh, you can this you can find this on um, BBC. I guess I'm sure it will be ugh, underwhelming uh, and just. I'm sure it will. It'll probably be the lowest rated 
BBC. I think Jodie Whittaker's was the lowest rated for the Doctor Who history. I'm sure this will be even worse than that. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe. See you guys on the next episode.